Hey hello everybody, my name is Kadem, welcome back for another video of Suzerain. We're gonna continue this series. We are right now doing a little bit worse for wear as uh, we are trying to basically do a bunch of different laws. We enacted last video, I think, uh, the Workers Act, uh, Rights Act, which basically has, uh, does exactly what it tells you or what it says. Uh, workers didn't have any rights, boys. Didn't have anything at all. They didn't even have like per hour uh, money and stuff limited. Uh, limited. So now they have uh, at least a limited amount of money that they can gain uh, per hour. And uh, immigrants is that are going to be slowly watched and stuff like that. So that's a really good document. Unfortunately, I had to go. Um, I had to go very badly on the depth side in order to do that. Managed to come back by one for the budget uh, by basically annoying an issue for the law enforcement. But the problem is right now is everybody, uh, every single pre person on the law enforcement side absolutely hates me right now because just simply because I seem to uh, I seem to be ignoring them altogether. It's not that I want to ignore them. It's just I don't have any budget for it. I can't spare anything. And I've already spared everything that I, I, I had. I put it all on education, healthcare system, and the military especially because of the whole external problems, you know. So, briefing on proposal education reforms. Let's see what we got. So, Lucian was seated across from me at the table going through documents. Shiara entered the room. Alright, so after the visit yesterday, I couldn't even sleep thinking about that little boy and the girl. Oh yeah, by the way, we visited the school. And it looked a lot more like a 1940 school uh, from Germany, that's for sure. I don't know what happened with these children. Hopefully they're going to be a little bit fine, uh, more uh, better, I guess. So I've never been so much uh, more sure of my intentions to reform my education system. Uh, me too, man. That was kind of scary. I don't know what that was all about. They were kind of scary, to be honest. Lucian took off his reading glasses and put it on the table. I agree, an educational reform is necessary. I gotta do it, boys. I mean, after what I saw at that school, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the reform is like a necessity at this point. And plus, I already decided to put some more budget into it, so let's do it. Exactly. Those students have to repeat the same soulless propaganda every single day. They're being brainwashed at an age where when their minds need to be free. Exactly. They need to be doing so stuff that normally normal people wouldn't do, you know, the stupid stuff. Children need to learn the hard way, so I don't know, that's not a good way to go for like disciplinary stuff, it's not good for children. So on top of that, young girls are denied the same opportunity as boys. They're forced into the role of housewives before they even reach puberty. Nothing's changed since I went to school. Oh, that's crazy. See, no changes at all, it's just gonna become stale, it's gonna become super bad boys you can't uh have no change right you gotta have change at some point woman like me lilia naya even your wife we had to study twice as hard to receive the same university education that you and lucian took for uh, for granted is that the kind of country you want your daughter to grow up in mr president we need to bring change we need to free the minds of the young people they are our future very well. What do we need to do for an education reform? Uh, we need to keep politics out of the uh, curriculum. Seoul should only be viewed as a historical figure. Exactly. Seoul is not a historical figure. He's not like a hero or anything. Uh, children shouldn't have to repeat his name every day. Exactly. Like, we don't have to worship him. We just have to know he existed. He's a thing, you know? Uh, anything that's historical for me, it's fine. I, I love history. You just don't like worship anybody. That's kind of weird when you start doing that. That this is ex actively poisoning young bright minds. Instead of thinking for themselves, they're learning to take things at va face value. We also need to ensure boys and girls receive the, the same instruction. In crafts like knight uh, knitting and sewing should be taught to both sexes or not at all. Well, I guess not at all because I don't think it's that important to be honest. Uh, sword, Swordland's youth must be technically skilled and capable for the next decade. That won't be possible with the amount of nationalistic indoctrination and narrowed mind thinking found in schools today. Either we raise a generation ready for the challenges of the future or not. What would it be, Mr. President? Well, Lucian, what do you think? Now, I'm going to reform it, obviously. 
I'm obviously gonna reform the uh, education system. It's 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 no be it's no biggie. Uh, obviously, I was gonna do that. You will not regret it. I will wor get to work immediately. Now that the de decision was made, let's move on. Very well. Uh, skimmed over the documents before continuing. After the budget increase, the ministry quickly began formulating plans on how to effectively use the money. Uh, but before moving forward, the question of keeping education fully stated founded or allowing for new private schools remains open. Tell us about the benefits of uh, private schools. Education should remain as a state service only. Uh, certainly this is the most ideal situation. I wouldn't say that. I think private schools would be good as well. Let's see. What's the benefits? I've made my opinion clear. I'm against it. But it would give us additional funds for education while increasing competition. It would support our overall economic strategy of promoting a market mar economy. Oh, all right. I might go for private schools because it does go with market economy. A few minutes of uh, deliberation passed. We have enough money to improve education in Sorlin. We do not need to complicate things further with a privati privatization insensitive. Uh, so what is your decision? Okay. Well, privatizing uh, these schools would uh, help me with my market economy promises. But if I keep it like it, she says, we have enough money as it is. We don't need more. But more is always better, boys. I don't know. Keep education solely as a matter of state. We need to prevent interference from private interests. We need to draw more funds. I think for just for the market economy, I think we should go privatization. I think it's much better. It creates like a challenge and uh, everybody gets challenged and everybody tries to over like overpass each other and stuff, beat each other, which is good because it creates more quality for the schools in term quality. People are going to be just better overall. So I think I think the privatization is a way to go for me, boys. Definitely a way to go. I've, I've actually uh, came to hate the state control um, schools uh, in my real life. So I think the privatization was always my favorite type of thing. So I think I'm definitely going to go for that. Let's initiate privatization. We'll do. That, we, that should be it for now. I will get to work and report back. This has been a very productive day. We'll re be returning to Ozols. All right. Uh, thank you for your time, uh, everyone. All right. Everybody dispersed and we are good. Uh, we absolutely decided to reform the whole uh, education system, obviously. And we just gained some budget from that, which is very good. So uh, just by privatizing uh, the entire uh, education system, uh, it helped us with our budget. So now we're at zero, boys. We're not at minus anymore. We're not in depth. Which is very good. Exactly like any chance I've got to help out my economy, I'll do it. And my budgets as well, right? Uh, more budget means I can do more stuff and sign papers and stuff. I already decided to start reforming the education. Decide to privatize the education, boys. Which is very good. It's going to give a little bit of challenge to everyone. So country overview, welfare. There we go. So education reform. And we've got uh, privatization done. Which is very good. So all these things, boys, all the green stuff are all good things. Modernize education technique, good urban institutions, and improve working conditions. All good. All of this for the welfare is very good. Education gap, uh, it still remains to be seen. And there's also all these red thingies that are not that good. Uh, I've got more red thingies than anything for most of these. Especially in, in the order status, uh, order is law enforcement basically, I'm super bad at it. Influential diplomacy, but there's not a lot I can do, you know, you gotta go one thing at a time. I don't know what I can use my wealth for though, I, I wish I could use it just like the budget to sign papers and stuff. Alright, so read the report from Oswald's. Ministry of Education has started work on education reform, really good. And the uh, other one, United Cantana launches second satellite. Okay, good for them, I guess. And meeting with Gloria Tori on planned reforms. Uh, I don't know which one is that. Gloria Tori, who is she? So I arrived at the Grand, Na Grand National Assembly, which was only a five-minute drive away from the palace. Today, I have a private meeting with Gloria Tori, one of the leading figures of the USP. Uh, to get her approval for the proposal, she was also key in reaching 150 signatures. Oh, that's for the Constitution, yeah. So I gotta, um, I gotta convince her basically to 
get on my side for the constitution. So uh, to propose as she states extensive control over our party's conservative and moderate wings. Yeah, she's very important. As I walked through the corridors, I was confronted by my memories of the historic building. Despite being a member of the assembly not long ago, it now felt like the distant past. I walked in the left wing of the assembly, which currently acted as the quarters of the USB. Gloria's office was the first one inside. I knocked on the door and entered. Uh, good morning, Mr. Uh, uh, Miss Tori. There you go. Good to see you uh, here, Mr. Rain. All right, so it was a small, neatly organized office. There were small figures, uh, figurines, photos, and plants all uh, around the place. It had a homey feel, unlike my own assembly office when I had worked here. On her gesture, I took a seat. The chair was very uncomfortable. How is, uh, how are you doing? There we go. I'm fine, Mr. Rain. How are you? Well, I'm very happy to see you. It's been a while. Indeed, Mr. President. All right, so she smiled. There we go. You got to make her feel good. You know, you got to... You gotta really make sure that she's on your side right now because she's very important and for the future, just for the simple future of my constitution, if I wanted it to pass, she's an important figure for it. So how does the presidential chair compare to the ones in the assembly? Not as good as you imagine? It's better, what can I say? Well, the chair is fine, but the work that comes with it is insane. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, well, you knew about that, didn't you? Anyway, let's keep this simple, Mr. Rain. We both uh, know why I, uh, we are here. You want me to give you my support. I don't see why the backbone of the USP would support your rushed reforms. Don't you realize they go directly against the wishes of the founder of this party and the state? Uh, the reforms are not against anyone. It's all in the name of democracy. In the name of democracy? You'd like the USP to disintegrate, wouldn't you, Mr. Rain? Even though you owe everything to Colonel Sol, I think you never liked him. Not the party he built, nor the party he built, or else. There is nothing personal about this, Mr. Uh, Miss Story. I would never betray our party. How do you suggest I, I never liked him? I'm proud, no. Look, there is nothing personal about this. Absolutely nothing personal. Whatever you intend to do, you will be facing quite the opposition. That's all I can say. I'm sure we can make a deal. Well, perhaps I could change your thoughts on the matter with some well-placed investments, probably. You think you can bribe me, Mr. President? For your safety, safety, I hope nobody heard that. That wall, the walls here are not as thick as in your palace. I'm sure we can make a deal. Look, I'm sure we can make a deal. I'm not sure about that. Especially when you're trying to decrease the electoral threshold. Uh, you must know that this will br mean bringing the communists into assembly. You will probably have a deal, uh, have a deal with e uh, either them or maybe the these guys. Friends seem to be positive about giving you support, though uh, too. The de uh, decrease is important to democratize our election. I have no deal. I have no deal with anyone. You're pointing figures without uh, even thinking. I reconsider the. De I can reconsider the decrease. No, nope. look, uh, the decrease is important. Dem uh, is important to democratize the election. I thought you were all about democracy, my girl. I don't know uh, how your acts can even be justified inside the USP. Decreasing the threshold to 3% is unacceptable. You will be uh, bringing all of the marginal par uh, parties in the assembly and reducing our major majority. I cannot allow you to destroy our party. Either this point is removed entire, uh, entirely or there will be no discussion. Uh, very well, I'm not changing that. 3%, it stays at 3%, my girl. That is not up to you, Miss Tori. My proposed uh, threshold stays. Well, will that ensure your support? No, all right. That is not up to you. Then we are in, a pa in an impasse. All right, Mr. President, I'm sorry that I won't be able to help you. I wish you luck gathering the signatures you need. She suddenly stood up. I must get back to her. Thanks for stopping. She extended her hand to me for a handshake. Shake her hand. Walk away without shaking her hand. But I'm not finished. I'm not going anywhere until you give me my uh, the signatures. Exactly. Please do not humiliate your, yourself further, Mr. President. Don't forget who you're talking to. You will give me the signatures. I don't care if it's willingly or not. I'd rather not reply to that. I left the ro her room. Al Albin and the reformist wing was, uh, was my last hope to get the needed 150 signatures for the proposal. Even then, it looked quite uncertain it would get 160 votes in the assembly. I went outside, Sergei drove me back to the palace where I met Lucian and told him the bad news. Well, she decided to go against me. 
Can we not get rid of people? Can we not just plan assassination attempts on people and stuff? That would be the best thing to do. I would do that the entire time. Anytime that someone disagrees with me or doesn't want to help me for a democratic solution, I'll just end up killing them or something. Come on, that would be the best option. Rain is making a mistake. Well, head of sort of second opposition party, National Front Party, uh, he said Mr. President will not be able to keep ruling the country without addressing policies that negatively affected our security, culture, and economy. He blamed uh, President Rain for not being open to any discussion about proper reforms. Proper reforms, in your mind, doesn't mean the same thing as me, alright? The reforms I made in the first place are not going to be changed, no matter what happens. You're going to do what I tell you, or you're not going to do shit, alright? So after our meeting with Gloria Tari and further discussion with the party, it was time to talk uh, to Alvin Calvin to take your former swing to support the proposal. I also plan to finally present a more fleshed out proposal and declare an agenda to the party after our meeting. I walked into the left wing of the assembly and entered the quarters of the USP. When I reached the meeting hall, I saw many of our members conversing inside. After taking a glimpse inside, I went back into the corridor to look for the office of uh, Alvin. When I reached his room, I knocked on his door and entered. Mr. President, welcome. Uh, the whole room was surrounded by bookshelves packed with files and papers. It was a small office with books and dossiers uh, lying on e every corner. It felt uh, claustrophobic. On this gesture, I took a seat. How is everything going, uh, Mr. Calvin? It's been busy. The party has been working very hard. Mr. President, thank you for asking. How's it going for you in the palace? It's pretty tough. Well, I'm feeling pretty good. Well, that's great to hear. I wanted to express my gratitude for passing the Workers' Rights Act. It's one of my m the most comprehensive and successful political efforts. Of course, of course. Uh, the Workers' Revolution will begin with small steps. There we go. One would think that I'm talking to Miss Walda. The party doesn't s uh, support such ideologies as you know. Uh, personally, there, is, uh, there are some principles that I respect in uh, Marianneavism. But I wouldn't accept it entirely in its entirety. I've been smiling, knocked on wood. Anyway, sir, let's talk about the proposal. Thanks for coming here for my input because there are some subjects where Gloria and I don't see eye for eye. I have to say the most uh, that most of the progressives were already starting to warm up to you. Your attempts at changing the constitution created a quite a bit of excitement. One could uh, one dare to say an excitement that hasn't been felt since the thirties. Yet there are issues with the current stage, uh, status of the draft proposal. So uh, may, we may need to contain our excitement a little longer. I cannot support this in its current state. I need your support, Mr. Calvin. Uh, I thought you were a Democrat. I am. But our Democrats have already established our demands, which are, were apparently ignored by you. You cannot claim that you're a Demo the Democrat here. All right. I can't let you sabotage this. Don't forget who you're speaking to. How about some other deal? Well, let's hear your problems. What's the problems? First, I'll say that I'm concerned about the drastic decrease in threshold. Why is everybody concerned about this? This is the most democratic thing to do is to decrease the threshold. Why is everybody mad about this? They're all mad because they're, they, they won't never have, like they, they'll never have majority again. That's just bullshit. Are they all corrupt or something? Nobody is truly democratic party, I guess. They're all just corrupt assholes, I guess. What the hell? The reformist wing of the party will do its best to boycott it. The change will be, uh, we uh, will have negative consequences for our party since dozens of new parties could potentially, potentially enter the parliament. Yes, that's a good thing. That's more open minds for anything. That's a good thing, my guy. He, po uh, he paused and twiddled his thumbs. I thought there would be some reform about the extensive decree powers. There isn't going to be reforms about the decrees. Look, we need to de the decrees to pass further reforms. I can't give every uh, away everything. Exactly. You should at least do something about the threshold. The party will not like this. I will remove the decrees of threshold. Everybody wants me to remove the threshold. What the hell, man? Is that really the only thing that people are angry about? A threshold? Look, you're gonna leave with it. That's a big no, I'm not, like, why is everybody mad about this? This is ridiculous, this is retarded. Absolutely retarded. You look down at the proposal, there might still be a way for me to get behind this. 
Remove your change to the threshold and we will be golden. No need to agitate our party, Mr. President. No, I can't do it. Right? Stop asking me for it. This isn't enough, Mr. President. We can't... We can take another look over the draft or perhaps there is something else you could offer me. Let's look at, uh, look at the draft again. I will give concessions. I'll offer you something else. I can offer you something. I can bribe you. I'm all ears. Oh, all right. There's somebody who is reasonable enough to be bribed. Finally. Uh, how about a position in my cabinet? If you give, if I give you the support, you'll be my uh, my VP. Collusion, my uh, my uh, VP in my next cabinet. Well, how about a position in my cabinet? I think we can achieve a lot if we lead together. Uh, there we go. Uh, well, if you promise me the position of vice president, very well. All right. So show him a check. How about this? I took a check uh, and uh, and showed it to him. He immediately got his attention. I was very direct. How much are we talking about here? A lot. Let's go. Let's give. Let's bribe him. Let's give him a lot of money, boys. Personal wealth. There we go. I got. I got money to spare. He took the check and slid it to the pocket of his jacket. Glad to me be making business with you. He glanced out the proposal on the table. It's looking good. I will support the proposal and get the needed signatures from our wing. There I go. I believe the reformers votes that are, uh, that I have will be very important to you. Who knows? Maybe you'll rec you'll consider me for a job in the government in the future for this. You bet I will, Mr. Uh, Mr. Calvin. I'll consider you if you prove yourself useful in the vote. I'll be expecting your votes, Mr. Calvin. Of course. I will talk to my guys shortly. I'll have their signatures soon. Thank you. There we go. See you in the conference, Mr. President. I left his room and we're gone. I went to the restaurant of the assembly to get something to eat while conversing with other members of a party. I saw Alban taking the, to his pit bull in the uh, distance. After a while, the preparations for the conference began and I went back into the conference hall and prepared my notes for the speech I was going to make. I took time to get all the present members of the party inside the hall. Gloria Tori announced me uh, from the stand. All right, so we're about to have the, ref uh, the reform boys. Let's hope that he passes through. I did go and bribe the guy, literally bribed the guy so he could uh, help me out with this. Now, Gloria Tori doesn't want to help me. But at least this guy is reasonable enough to be bribed, boys, so there's a good thing. I started my speech with the reason of the changes to the Constitution. Uh, the people of Sordon have spoken. Our system and institution of its increasingly became undichromatic. Over the decades after Seoul tightened to its grip on the country, since then we have support corps, the support corps that obstructs the duties of the President and the Assembly. We must finally be brave to go against the status quo that we created that uh, that they created and write a new constitution i paused when some people started clapping it was short-lived after taking a breath i continued talk about democracy talk about my usb needs to survive to the next election nope Tar uh, target the old guards in the supreme court uh talk about democracy i'm gonna talk about democracy right here i brought attention to democracy and why we must write a more democratic constitution i explained how our proposal will fix the issues the left side of the hall where Alban uh, set started uploading. Later explained the contents of the new constitution and asked for their full support for the proposal. Asked uh, for their votes. Ordered them to vote. Threatened them to vote yes. I'm gonna ask for their votes. I'm not gonna order anybody. I asked for each and every member's vote to, ma uh, to make a change together. The reformist wing on the left stood up and started clapping loudly after Alban made a sign. There we go. I saluted everyone in the room one last time and bid them farewell before leaving the stand. I walked outside the assembly back into the palace. Alright, let's see how the reform go if the reform is going to go through, boys. We're moving on to a new chapter. Let's do it. Or, I guess, new thing. Balance of power in Eastern Mikorpa. Alright, let's see what that's going to be all about. Uh, is there going to be a war going on or something? Hopefully my institution, my constitution is going to go up. Alright, so we're a brand new place. We're not in chapter 3 or anything, but uh, we just moved on. I guess it's a brand new cha uh, thing, I guess. Radicals. Archaic state of Sordland comes Christian laws. Alright, dear re uh, reader. Okay, geopolitical calls. So reign to meet with Smolak and Van Horten. So I haven't met with these guys yet. Let's see what we got right here. Oh, a bunch of sets. So a reader report. Ministry of Health discusses privatization. Okay, and we got some things. So we got a bill to uh, to um, worry about. So 
Sign a video or build, boys. Let's see what this is. Uh, brand new build. So I don't have any budget. Rem uh, remember, I don't have any budget. So, religious harmony build. For the purpose of increasing religious harmony and unity, the following laws are established in religious affairs. Section 1 of the HRB uh, will ensure that the day of dissension ceremony in the Ark Century of Dare uh, shall from now on only hold sermons in the Swordish language. Section 2 will forbid sanctuaries from holding sermons in Bloodish unless they receive... I'm going to veto this. Already I'm vetoing this, boys. You can already tell. I'm not going to let that pass through. That's literally infringing on uh, freedom of religion. The, the hell is this? That's like one of the worst things ever. Plus, I'm not going to spare money for that shit. That would be ridiculous. All right. Uh, news. Radical. Present rain protects religious freedoms. Of course I do. Of course I'm going to do that. That's kind of crazy. All right. Superpowers offer aid. Let's see what we got. So, uh, United Cantana and Arcasia have approached us with some bi a substantial financial aid offer in return for refuel and repair access of our, at our military installations. United Cantana requests access to its ships to be able to, uh, uh, to able dock at the Conrad Naval Base, while Arcasia requests access for its jets to land at Ariari, Air Force Base in return for the aid. Okay, so uh, United Cantana doesn't, they didn't say that they wanted to ha aid us. Oh, they want to aid us? Okay, so Arcasia or, let me, let me just see really quick though. I think the Navy is more important, a Navy is more important than having an actual Air Force. I think the Navy is much more important. So I'm going to go for United Cantana right here. Let's, uh, let's do that. There we go. So. Plus one budget just like that, boys. We just gotta gain the budget from that. And we're getting Navy support from the Arcasians, which is very good. So Young Swords Ban, which is uh, military. All right. Given national base access. All right. So let's see what we got here. So read the report. Condemnation, uh, condemnation from Arcasia. The Arcasian ambassador and also it's condemning a financial bill between Sordan and the United Cantana. Criticizing President Rain for inviting United Cantana to middle in Eastern Maker Mercopen affairs. He announced that President Walker will do whatever it takes to defend his sphere from the approaching threat of Madden Village. Look, it is what it is. All right. If I'm going communist, I'm going communist. I don't care. I just want to protect myself. I thought the Navy would be a lot better option than the Air Force. So that's how, how it is. A call from uh, Gus Menger. This guy still wants to talk to me. What the hell? I was sipping my first cup of coffee for the day when the phone lit up and rang. I swore under, the, uh, under my breath. I thought my schedule was clear for at least half an hour. I picked up the phone. Mr. President, how are you doing on this fine day, if I may ask? What the hell do you want? Minister of Rural uh, Development. Why are you talking to me? What is it? Fine as well. I, I was doing well until you gave me a call. Well, what is it? I was calling you because I received a call from the CEO of Armadine Industries, Arvin Bridges, about the recent initial public offering on the Venturi City Stock Exchange, okay? As you might have guessed, it's about our little venture uh, investment of a thousand shares worth nearly a million rand. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yes, I did invest in that thing. Uh, did we get some money out of that? I'm very pleased to say that we have made gains. Oh, nice. That's fantastic. The shares have doubled in price at the APO and we will re soon receive the profits made from the investments. Isn't that great? This better be worth it. Well, great news. So how much did we gain? Uh, you will love it. In total, we have made near 2 million sword of shran. Perfect. That's fantastic, boys. I'll give all of that. I guess I'll um, spare it up. I'll either give it to entirely to my budget or I'll split it up, I guess. Uh, I bet that right now you're wishing you had bought more stocks earlier, right? It was a good start. It was good for a start for sure. There we go. It definitely was. I assure you, this will pair and come appeal in comparison to what we will do together in the future. The money will be transferred to your personal bank account shortly. Very well, talk to you later. Keep it up to date. This is beginning on a good partnership. Keep it up. I think so too. Goodbye. All right, the line dropped. Okay, so my investments in the market 
just uh, made me rich, boys. I just gained two million just like that. So now I'm rich. I've got wealth, which is very good. Uh, the one thing I kind of want to do is I wonder if I can like spear some and get it into the budget. I don't know. I don't think it's possible. Private party and briefing on the status of uh, immigration. Well, I don't know if I want to go to the private party yet. I think the briefing is more important, to be honest. Uh, by the way, I am doing one hour videos for this game, at least for now, boys. Uh, because there is another game coming up. There's a couple of games coming up, right? It's starting to uh, to happen uh, since we're in August and we're coming up to uh, September. So with all the new games uh, going, uh, going to come out, I think uh, I need to start making a little bit longer videos for the older ones. So especially Suzerain. So uh, I'm just going to do longer videos. So one hour edition videos, which allows me to do more. So Armadine stock jumps to nearly double, which is very good. All right. So let's see uh, what we got. We're going to go into uh, all sorts and we're going to have the briefing on the immigration. Uh, so we were in the middle of a meeting at the palace. The ensuing uh, discussion quickly became heated. I don't think so, Mr. Uh, Mr. Witchy. It, do it just doesn't make any sense for, uh, to me that a foreign citizen should come before a swordish citizen in Swordland. Uh, well said. M my analysis is also in line with this. Especially during the economic recession, we are giving swordish jobs to migrants from other countries. What about our own people? Immig immigrants are the reason our economy is not completely unsalvageable. Uh, I look at the Anolan immigrants in Anol England. They have revitalized the whole region and, and in turn boosted the economy of the entire country. Simon can attest to that. Statistically speaking, allowing immigrants to become part of the workforce contributes uh, to our economy. But I agree that the current situation is very nuanced. With that said, we, can, uh, just, we can't just tighten our immigration policy, expect the economy to stay the same. We need to put our economy in the recession at the forefront. Thankfully, we have just started receiving financial aid from United Cantana. Exactly. I can't believe we're accepting financial aid from communists. Well, look, Isef. Come on, Yosef. Chill out. What's next? Letting a child murderer buy us a lunch? What's the... What are you talking about? Containing warships in Karnyat, my father will be rolling in his graves. I will not let you question my decision. Don't be dramatic. We need to be friendly with our potential allies. Exactly. Allies? With those communists? I'd rather not uh, die. Well, then die then. Because we are going to be allies with communists whether you like it or not. Uh, well said, Mr. Lencia. Gentlemen, can we please get back on topic? Right. Sorry, Mr. Witchy. As I was just saying before I was interrupted, look at the superpowers. Did you see them closing off their borders? Why do you uh, think these, their economies are in such good shape? They're in their current state because they're welcome, they welcome immigration and use it to their advantage. We need to modernize and reach the level of uh, superpowers. I need to, I agree that we need to consider the economic impact of immigration. Swordish citizens must come first. Exactly, our citizens should never feel threatened by foreigners. We need a decision. But before we move on, Mr. President, do you have any questions about the current state of immigration? I'm an equivalent. I don't have any questions. Let's move on to the solutions. I don't have any questions. Uh, David Wishy opened his dossier, stooped out it with a seal, and uh, opened a trade or whatever. Uh, before we make any decisions, I have to remind you, during the elections, we promised to tighten immigration laws. Exactly. We're tightening the immigration, boys. Of course, as you know, uh, I was and still am against it. I agree with David. We can turn immigration to our advantage from a financial standpoint. Advantage? You should go over the, uh, the amount of disadvantage caused by uh, the immigrants. I can't provide you with a, a, a report later. Well, believe me, it would surprise you. We need to keep you our promises and focus on our citizens. That I w that, that is what I think. David sighed uh, wearily. This is going nowhere. If we decide to tighten, uh, uh, tighten immigration, what does that entail? It's going to hurt our economy. That's what it's going to do. But look. I made promises. I'm going to keep my promises. I keep saying that, boys. What are the consequences? I'm, re I'm ready to make an, uh, a decision. All right. Everyone lean forward. Uh, we'll tighten our immigration laws. I'll sign the decree soon. So uh, be prepared to start working on it. We're tightening it, boys. It is unfortunate to see certain move in this direction. 
But I trust you have good intentions. I'll move ahead with implementation. This has the chance to affect our trade negotiations with Anola tr negatively. They ex expect us to respect the flow of people. Indeed, it will be a challenge to convince these countries as they, uh, as they see our borders close. Not only that, we've already slide, uh, slighted William in the past. They might see that this is a return to the 30s, which would uh, definitely affect our negotiations. I wouldn't worry about that too much. We know Wellen is dealing with the bloodish terrorists. I would argue that President Small Act would beg us to tighten our immigration. With that said, I don't fancy Wellen as a partner since uh, they, are, they are as reliable as a, f a flopping fish out of water. I'm against isolationism. It is the wrong path. It's not about isol isolating Sorden, but protecting it. Well, we can't let internal policy uh, be, be decided by foreigners. Sodland, as always, comes first. Well, look, this is not about isolating Sodland. It's just about protecting it altogether. This will isolate us in every way. The more we are connected to the world, the better. The world is entering the age of globalization. The decision will make us stay behind. Anything else that needs to be said? Thank you for contribution. Uh, contribution. Let's uh, wrap this up. Misters gathered their documents and rose from their chairs, some frowns on their faces. Uh, I'm looking for uh, forward to the upcoming trade talks. Peter and I have been uh, visiting Starport and uh, Rocklavitz in uh, preparation. I'll be uh, coming along to talk with the e e economy minister. Looking forward to the potential partnership. If we are finished, I, I need to head off in the and get the ministry to work on a new policy. Same here, a barter's un uh, units needs to be informed and prepared. Yes, we are finished. Keep up the uh, keep up the good work, everyone. Ministers dispersed. All right, so yeah, we definitely decided to tighten our immigration. Look, it might sound like a bad idea, boys, to close our borders, but the thing is, all I'm thinking about is my promises. I made some promises for my election. I'm intend, fully intent on keeping all these promises, boys. Fully intent on doing it. So, President Reigns sells Swordland for money. Interesting. Freedom indication choice. A huge step backwards in the ending recession. Swordland tightened up, uh, tightens, tightens up uh, the immigration. There we go. So, turn five, boys. All that. Uh, what about this? So now in the order section, nationwide protests quelled. So that's good. We don't have any protests. Uh, streamline immigration. So that's kind of a status quo type of thing. And uh, all of the rest is pretty much good. Now, I think uh, the only thing we got left is to go with the party. So let's go with the party, I guess. Far from becoming accustomed to my workload as president, I only felt more and more sh snowed under this uh, as the week passed. It has been ages since I had it, uh, any time to myself. I was starting to lose my focus and my temper was growing increasingly thin. Peter was the first to realize I needed a break. After much uh, casualing, he finally uh, persuaded me to come to a meeting of his new venture, Gentleman's Club. For the past few months, he had been hosting a saloon of sorts, not just for polit politicians and businessmen, but also for artists, entertainers, people of taste. He told me with a smile on his face. Uh, there was only one rule. No wives or girlfriends allowed. Hence the name. Uh, I'll, and so I found myself in front of his new luxury villa in Elrory. Very loud jazz music uh, emanated from inside. I waited and waited. Finally Peter opened the door. I could smell the whiskey on his breath. Anton, finally. Now the real party can start. Come on in. As soon as I entered, Peter closed the door and turned the small, to the small crowd. Gentlemen, a minute of your time, please. I now have the uh, privilege to present you to you, the man himself, the fourth president of Swordland, the man, Mr. Anton Rain. Uh, I know him. F I known him for long enough to, to understand that he was more than a little drunk. He made an elaborate mock a courtesy as I passed him and walked into the room. Music stopped and I felt everyone's eyes on me. Thank you, Miss uh, Peter. What's next? A chore? Uh, a cure, a, a marching band, well, and I present to you Peter Victor, the first alcoholic uh, vice president of Swordland. There we go. My joke didn't sit well with Peter, nor the crowd. There was a short, awkward silence before he continued. Well, I'm being honest with everyone. Dear members, please give a warm welcome to our very special guest, if I may enter. Here, take this. 
He handed me a glass of whiskey and put his hands on my shoulder. We all know why we are gathered here tonight to celebrate life to a brief escape for our tumultuous uh, professions. I personally don't know any better cur a cure for stress than a little drink. Only a little one. Uh, raise your glass? No, only a little one. A few people in the crowd chuckled and some raised their glasses. Now, the tradition dictates that uh, as the club uh, president, I have to remind you of our rule, house rules. There are three. No politics, no wives, and no one sober. Cheers. Peter drank the whiskey in his glass in one go. Sip, drain. I'm just gonna sip, uh, sip your whiskey. There we go, I'm just gonna sip. Anton Rain might have uh, to, uh, the power to make presidential decrees, but I, Peter, the president of this club, now declare this party started. M music, go. The band started up again, and after greeting the crowd around me, let me show you around. We walked through the corridors of his mansion, statues and painting lined at the start of the... with white walls. An arch window provided a view of the neatly manufactured uh, ma manicured grounds completed with a swimming pool, uh, swimming pool. A grand lesbian marble staircase uh, led up to the st second story. Peter gestured as a massive crystal chandelier hanging overhead. That chandelier was made in the 18th century. Can you believe it? There is even an edge maze in the garden. What's the story behind the chandelier? How are you paying for all of this? It's a little much, isn't it? Ah, oh, come on, Anton, you only live once. I'll let you in a secret. Gus Menger has a lot of contacts in real estate. He brokered a good deal for me. He is also be here. He'll also be here tonight. I can introduce you if you like. Well, I already know him. What did you promise him in return? Well, leaving him uh, a lavish mission with my country suffers is when my country suffers is not for me. Exactly. I understand completely. That's why I've donated three thirty percent of my vice presidential salary to charities. That's what it says on my tax forms, at least. My, we continue walking to my circle back to where we had started. So what do you think of my little hideaway? Not bad. Well, frankly, I find it disgusting. But it's amazing, but I already call it a hideaway. More like a palace. Well, it definitely doesn't rival yours. Anyway, let's be a back to party. Arrange some, uh, for some caviar to be brought in, the, in from Lesbia. You're going to love it. He opened the door to, ma to the main hall and re rejoined the other guests. The music was louder now and the mood de decidedly more in inebriated. What the hell is that word, boys? Man, some of these words that are, uh, are written down, I just can't. Like, I've never heard of them in my life. A cocktail waitresses were carrying around plates of canopies. I don't know what that is. Wearing dresses that uh, left little to the ima uh, imagination. I, s I thought this was a gentleman's club. Well, uh, Jester uh, at one of the races to come over. So this is what you've been hiding from, Evelyn, I guess. No one is hiding anything. She knows about these gatherings. Uh, he averted my gaze for a second before calling over one of the races. She was in her mid-twenties, wearing red lipstick, her blonde hair nearly tied into a ponytail. On her pa uh, plate were toast... Toast points slathered in the lesbian caviar Peter had mentioned. I took a bite. It was rich, salty, tasting of pure seaside. I could almost hear the sound of waves and seagulls. Lesbian caviar, best in the world, I'm telling you. Anton, there are few pleasures in life that, uh, that are this. As the waitress left us to serve another attendee, she flashed a quick smile at Peter over her shoulder. So he smiled back a little too broadly. Okay, it seems like he's cheating on his wife, boys. That's going well for Peter right here. Man, I have a good friend, don't I? I should break up with that friend right away, man. That hell, It's not a good friend at all. It's really not a good person to be around. Uh, his eyes were still fixed on her, with an expression I remembered from our many nights on uh, together as students. Oh, look, there's Gus. Why don't you talk to him? I will be back shortly. Peter, I am warning you, don't make a mistake. Mistake? What are you talking about? I'm just going to the washroom. I'll be back before you know it. I swear. He left the room and I added over to Gus. Uh, Gus Minger was standing next to a couple of men that I recognized as banking industry magnets. As I approached, all of them turned to me and bowed their heads. Mr. President, a toast to our new member, everyone. 
Uh, Gus and I clinch uh, our glasses at the people around us and uh, raise theirs. You don't seem all that surprised to see me here. That's because Pierre told me you were going to come. He also told me that you might be interested in potential opportunities such as, well, this. He opened his arm, gesturing at our opulent surroundings. Let's take a walk. The balcony has an amazing view of Ellery. We left the room and made our way to the balcony. On the way, he took out two cigars and held, on, uh, held one out for me. Uh, I'm just going to refuse the cigar. Uh, we went out to the balcony and all of, a sorry, uh, all of Ellery was at our feet. From this vantage point, I was able to see how expensive the building plot was. The swimming pool and the edge maze were visible from here. Leaning over the rail, uh, railing, I admired the view for a moment before Gus spoke up. I know you're wondering about the deal Peter made. In a nutshell, thanks to my network, he was able to procure the house for half the asking price, which would have been impossible under any other circumstances. I would be delighted to discuss a similar arrangement with you. In fact, I have prepared a document with my own personal favorite opportunities. I, this, is at le this is the least I can do since you have been generous to many business people in the country. I'm not looking for uh, to. I'm not looking to make any investments at the moment. But since for you, I'm glad uh, my investment decisions are paying off. Look, I'm not looking for any investments. I I'm good right now. Real estate uh, is the best investment uh, anyone can make. With the current economic situation, it only makes sense to put your money into such a tangible asset. But also, I have a few other opportunities for you to make a side profit. If real estate doesn't interest you, is there any chance I can convince you? Uh, no, this is my final offer. I, I'm not, like, I've already made my money. I know when to stop. And real estate is not, I'm not going to go into that. Very well, I won't push her further. If you excuse me, I'm going to refresh my drink. See you around. You left to rejoin the party. Alone on the balcony, I looked uh, out over Ellery. Suddenly, I have uh, I heard a rustling for the edge uh, from the edge maze below. I looked down and saw a silhouette, two silhouettes, actually so close together they seemed to be entangled. I squinted and tried to get a better look. It was definitely two people kissing, but I couldn't see either of the face faces. Well, obviously I know who they are. It's kind of obvious. I returned to the party and spent some time mingling with the other guests. Engaging them in small talk about their businesses, their children, their relationships. Around in an hour later, Peter showed up next to me. See you. I told you I'd be back before you knew it. An hour later. You had to go to the bathroom for an hour, my guy? Give me a break. Well, was that you in the edge maze, my guy? What are you talking about? I told you I, was in the, I went to the washroom. Around the same time you were gone, I saw two people kissing in the edge maze. Well, I will be there uh, direct. Were you kissing the waitress? No. How could you think that? I'm a ma married maid. Uh, man. All right. Well, do you know... You know that you can tell me anything. Oh, well, look. I'm just asking. Hey, hey you, can, uh, you can have her if you want. Anyway, what a drink. Uh, want a drink? Because I do. He poured us uh, two large glasses of whiskey and we drank them in a, in a go. Throughout the party, we drank and drank, just like old times. I woke up the next day with a pounding headache and more than a few regrets. My memories of the evening were easy, but there was one important detail that kept coming for, uh, back to me. The red lipstick on Peter's collar. But, be, uh, but maybe my memory was playing tricks on me. No, it sure wasn't. It wasn't, and I'm gonna definitely give me a snitch on that part, boys. Alright, it's unacceptable for a price president to act like that. It's definitely unacceptable. And the fact that he's a vice president in the first place, like, he's only that in that position just because he's my supposed friend. I would, in real life, never be friends with someone like that, boys. That's just ridiculous. Peter's uh, uh, Trolls Lavish Party. Uh, po uh, police violence in the old capital. Whatever, I guess. The opening of the Benfi Festival. So, last thing we're going to do for today, boys, we're going to go into the festival. Not... We just went for a party, and now we gotta uh, enter a festival. God damn. So our murder case slowly made it its way towards the magnificent Banffy High Arts Center. Night was falling, and the festival was about to begin. I flipped through the brochure that had been giving to us at the hotel. On the front page, there was the face of uh, Curtin Leste, mayor of Enrica. 
He was a Ben Fee native who had a long, uh, long standing relationship with the city's current mayor. And he had been personally invited to make tonight's opening speech. Yes, which I allowed him to do instead of my wife, who had no reason to do a speech whatsoever. Uh, the Ben Fee Festival was one of the biggest events of the year. It originally marked the start of the annual, annual religious pilgrimage. A week's long journey is still undertaken by devout nourists, but today was better to the, known as a cultural celebration that drew thousands of revelers to the city. There were film screenings, concerts, theater and dance performances, art exhibitions, and celebrity studied nightly galas. The opening ceremonies were broadcast on TV and watched by millions. Oh, that sounds like a good time! Now that sounds like my type of party, boys. Arts, artists, and stuff like that, that's my type of party. That's the type of place that my sister and I would go at. Like, uh, galas and stuff, definitely would go at that, but... Other things, like the other type of party we went to, not my type, but this one is my type. That's more like it. Uh, as the car slowed, a, co a colony of reporters and security guards rushed to meet us. I turned my attention to Monica. Since I refused to let her make the opening speech, her attitude towards me had changed. She now only spoke to me if I asked her a question, as if it was something important concerning the children. Say nothing? Uh, will you ever forgive me? No, I'm just gonna say nothing and waited for Sergei to open the door. As soon as Sergei opened the door, we, we were enveloped by the roar of the crowd. The new, next few minutes were a blur of handshakes, photos and reporters, questions. The onlookers cheered as we walked the red carpet to the nearly, newly built art center. We followed the guards through the carvinous white halls until we came to a set of arched doors leading to the other terrain. We waited outside as security did a quick sweep of the area, then headed in. I had been asking to, ma uh, to make a quick set of remarks, introducing uh, Kurt and Nasty. I beckoned Monica to join me on the, on the podium. I'm going to find my seat. Alright, Monica brushed past me, took her seat in, front of, in the front row, crossed her arms. I walked along to the podium. That's fine, if, you w if she wants to be an ass about it, let her be an ass. I spoke for just a minute, reading a paragraph. My speechwriter had churned out and the, about the importance of the festival in Benfi to Sutherland. I conclu concluded my in, uh, inviting Curtin uh, Lesty, uh, the mayor of Enri uh, Enrica, to the podium. I stepped down and joined Monica in the front row. Her arms were still folded. I welcome to the first day of Benfi, Benfi festival. He paused for a moment to let the crowd cheer and his eyes briefly met mine. This is a night for the people of Benfi. Indeed, for the people of Swordland, to put aside their differences and come together in celebration. Yes, as we are united for the festivities, we must remember the real reasons we are gathered here. The crowd felt silent, the people were giving their full attention to what he had to say. This festival was founded around the principles of our cherished religion, Nurity. Yet over the years, it has been severed from its sacred routes and become something else, something more per perverse. An excuse for public drunkenness and grotesque displays of, a, of the flesh, and the occasion for a young woman to parade their bodies and engage in a lavishous behavior. As he went on, I could see Monica become increasingly agitated. What in the hell are we ta is he talking about? Lavishous behavior? What century does he think we live in? Monica turned back to watching the speech, a frown on her face. Perversion hidden under the guise of art. And it is not befitting to the beautiful city of the crowd was becoming restless. Many of the younger attendees were murmuring in disagreement, with a few of the older ones were nodding vigorously. As I said, provision hidden under the guise of art is not enough. Okay, Monica is starting to lose it. The, uh, the all fell silent. and Monica rose and continued. Mr. Leste, it is not young women who are disgraced to this fine festival, but you. You and your backwards peritonical attitudes which have been holding this country back for far too long. Monica, sit down. You're making a fool of yourself. Alright, watch the events unfold. Alright, I'm just gonna say sit down. No, I will not sit down this time. Monica turned to the face of the audience, speaking loud enough to, her, uh, to be heard without a microphone. Woman of Sorland, we must not let people like Mr. Uh, Eleste use religion as a justification to demean and oppress us. Our time has come. Alright, she's doing... Alright, 
Time to imprison my wife, boys. Time to imprison her right away. She's officially tr uh, trying a coup on me. That's uh, I, I would call it a coup right there. This is bullshit. I'm not going to let her do that. Shot grass ran across the, uh, the crowd. A few people rose and applauded. Kurt and Leslie waited to sp speak. I think Mr. Rain is forgetting his... Uh, Mrs. Rain is forgetting her place. What do you think my place is, Mr. Leslie? The kitchen? The festival is not about your retrograde uh, traditions. We are living in modern times now. It's 1954. And isn't it your place to decide how the people of Benfi, especially a woman, should be celebrating their own festival? Monica, that's enough. You stop right here, or I am going to have to imprison you for life. Because right now you're trying to literally ruin my chances for the constitution, and I'm not going to allow that. What do you mean enough? I've barely even started. I looked at the podium to see Curtis Lester's piercing gaze on me. There would surely be a price to pay for this. Mr. President, could you please control your wife before she impresses herself any further? Monica, get back to your goddamn seat. I'm sorry about this, Mr. Lester. Please, uh, please finish your speech. Uh, you know what, Curtin? My wife is... No, she's not right. Monica, we've been over this. Now is not the time. Sit down. Look, I'm sorry uh, about this, Mr. Lester. Um... Please finish your speech. This is very embarrassing for me. And uh, I gotta say, I chose a bad uh, I chose a bad woman for a wife. Uh, that's just how it is, I guess. I chose a bad, de made a bad decision. Thank you, Mr. President. Benfi always been a beacon of culture, tradition, and religion. Many people battles have been fought over this precious city. Army after army has tried to claim it for their own, but we fought back and won each time. We stand here thanks to the strong men who are able to protect their families, their lands, their way of living. Every day I praise God that we have succeeded so far. Scattered applause uh, broke out from some of the older members of the audience. I leaned over to, um, to Monica. It's a bit extreme, but he's right. We owe everything to God? Nah. He sounds more like a priest than politician. I praise God. He's, on he's only allowed to speak for another two minutes. Look, he's only, uh, he's, he, on he sounds like more like a priest than a politician. She said nothing, her gaze fixed forward. Yet the traditions that, uh, that form the very fabric of our society are, are being tested. Even as I speak. He looked pointedly at Monica. Uh, we must stay true to our values so that Sorland can prevail. So that Benfi can prevail. With these at the forefront, I, can convince that Sor I am convinced that Sorland will continue to be the greatest nation in the world. I invite every single one of you to celebrate our roots and our traditions at this Holy Benfi Festival. I hereby declare this festival open. Pre praise God, praise Sorland, praise Benfi. Amoria Westcore, with Vesquires Sidas, uh, Vectan Sidas, I guess. Uh, most of the people in the hall finished the decades old saying, including me. Monica, uh, Monica's lip moved, but she didn't say the word out loud. Excited the stage, exi exited the stage at the, as the band struck up the f uh, official festival anthem. I spent the rest of the evening, evening al alternately watching the festivities and conversing with lo local politicians. By the time we go back to the hotel, I was exhausted. But thanks to the festivities still raging outside and the sound of Monica t tossing and turning beside me, I couldn't sleep at all. All right. Well, that was a disaster, almost. What the hell was wrong with my wife, boys? She's lost her mind, I think. So protest, uh, elsewhere, protest and looting, and uh, gang violence, increased report. Whatever, I guess it's not my problem. What about this? Is it refugees on Vernon? Okay. Well, uh, this is pretty much it. We're gonna stop it for right here, boys. Let's see. Uh, well, this is Relin deploying special forces to Vernon. Okay. So I'm going to leave it for right here, boys. Remember to leave a like and subscribe to the video. I'll see you guys for the next one. Keep it easy.